everyone, it's Sandra, and I am back here with my kitchen worm bin I affectionately call Cinderella. Cinderella has been running for several years and is a mature worm bin. It was 30 days ago that I used Cinderella to demonstrate the different research on having a worm bin that is at various moisture levels, and I commented that the worms actually like it that way. Maybe they don't like a uniform moisture. Maybe they like a more dried uh, level that's right at the top here and then the condensed castings down the bottom where it's more moist and the different stages of development of worms respond favorably to different levels of moisture. You can take a look at the video. I'll put the link in the description and I'll just put the image here on the screen so you can tell which one I'm talking about. All right, so Cinderella is now back indoors. Landon and I moved her back indoors a few days ago. So this bedding has come up to temperature. I had commented that she was getting a little dry in my last video, but it's been 30 days. I'm still feeling moisture in these upper levels. That's what you get with the mature worm bin. The mucus that the worms secrete really holds on to moisture and so even though this material has been basically sitting with just very loose bubble wrap on it for a month and most of that time it was outdoors it is still nicely moist and I'm sure as I get deeper in the layers I'll find even more moisture. This is Prince Charming my adorable worm clay worm uh, feeding zone indicator so this is the end that I fed and I remarked right when I fed that I was a little worried that I put a, a lot of carbon in and not a lot of food scraps to introduce moisture. So let's go in this uh, zone right here. I'll put an image on the screen of the previous feeding, a little insert, and you can see that I dumped a lot of carbon in here. Cinderella being my kitchen worm bin usually gets a regular carbon. Not that it's irregular, but just things like toilet rolls and tissues and paper towels and takeout containers. That's typically her carbon. Obviously, I throw leaves in from time to time, and I may do so today, depending on what I find. But let's see to make sure that the worms got into that feeding the last time that there was enough moisture and they didn't all stay in the established vermicompost over here where I know the moisture will still be okay. The new carbon went in pretty dry. Here's an avocado pit, and I can see right away that there's a wisp on it, so I'm not going to squeeze it. Oh, I'm feeling moisture. Even my MS fingers can feel moisture as I go down to the bottom, or moisture has come in from that one feeding Here's some of the carbon that I added last time. It was takeout containers. Here's a takeout container like you would get uh, french fries or fish and chips. Can't remember what we got in it. But there's the takeout containers. Yeah, yeah, and I actually, they feel moist but not saturated. They went in dry. And here's like a paper towel. Now it has soaked up moisture. And I hope you can, or this is another takeout container. I'm sorry. This one, we also got takeout in. It's one of those paper molded containers. That's obviously a corn husk. And look at the worms loving the corn husk. But yep, the worms are on this carbon. Obviously, they can't take a bite out of it until the microbes uh, chew away at it. Well, microbes don't chew either. But uh, that needs to break down some more before the worms can get into that carbon. But yeah, so these were all the dry bits of carbon that I put in last time. Now that's something that I addressed in my carbon to nitrogen ratio video that I also mentioned last time. And that is just because you add carbon to your bin doesn't necessarily mean that it's available to the worms. In this case, I put the carbon in and the carbon in dry. So that is right away a little bit of an impediment to the worms. The bin had to distribute enough moisture over there. The food scraps had to soak into the carbon to make it available to the worms. 
And so these corn husks are, are not what I'm talking about. I'm talking more about these takeout containers. But to be bioavailable to the worms, this material, all carbon, has different timelines, if you like, of how quickly worms can get into it. Moisture is going to be an important factor. So the more moist the carbon, um, the more mo the more microbes will be able to get into it, and then the worms will be able to get into it. If the carbon is very uh, has a high surface area, something like a tissue or tissue paper or newspaper, it can disappear very quickly as soon as the material is saturated and has attracted microbes on its surface, which will be pretty much immediately in a mature worm bin, these worms would be able to suction up some of that carbon. You can see this toilet roll has little wisps on it, or these are small juveniles as well as wisps. And they obviously like the moisture of that carbon. So when you're putting dry carbon in your bin, you might want to evaluate whether the carbon has a very thin texture to it that may determine how quickly. If like this, it's a tissue and it goes in in a clump and not spread out thinly, it's going to take longer for the worms to get into it. So, you know, when we talk about the carbon to nitrogen balance in a worm bin, the carbon has to be bioavailable to the worms. There's a nice cocoon there on a corn husk. So the carbon has to be bioavailable to the worms. So I like, you know, obviously Cinderella, she's a mature bin. I like mixing it up. Some of the carbon goes in and it's very thin tissues. Some of the carbon goes in and it's like those thicker preformed carbon takeout containers and, and, and the like, and they're going to take longer. The springtails that you see here on the toilet roll, they are actually doing a great job making this carbon available to the worms. They are chewing it up. They do not affect the carbon at all. It gets passed into the material and the worms then can take it up as part of their carbon in their diet. So I'm pleased that in 30 days, this material has equalized the moisture, which if you watch uh, my last video a month ago, that's what I ended with is I'm hoping that the moisture will regulate in this bin. This is not a wet worm bin. You can see how easily the material is coming off my hands, but this bin is now indoors. So I don't want it to be wet. I want Cinderella to have a nice fluffy texture and I hope when I go in the other side, that's exactly what I will see. But she gets our takeout cutlery. There's a stick with a wisp on it. Yeah, uh, eat, but something like sticks or this could be a stalk from something from my garden. I'm not quite sure. They are not going to be bioavailable to the bin for a long time. However, if you just look at the sticks like this in the bin, you can see that they create you know, spaces, they create gaps in the bedding, which again, helps aerate and help from getting into a muddy condition. You see the little wood bug or roly poly crawling across the surface there. He also is helping break down all this carbon for the worms. Cinderella, you're looking great. So I'm just gonna dump over her big carbon material over there. And we're gonna take a look at this side over here and I think because the bedding's getting so deep, I'm gonna give her some carbon this week that is going to be more bioavailable. It's gonna be in finer uh, thickness, more surface availability. Um, there's a popsicle stick. So that her worms can get to work on getting these chunkier bits finished. Now, again, the worms don't do this. It's the roly polies and the springtails that need to get to work on it. But uh, if I keep the roly polies and the springtails working on this big stuff and keep the worms busy with the thinner, uh, more surface available carbon, I think I'll get to a bin 
that I'll be able to pull out because in this end that I did not feed last time, uh, even though you can see the chunky bits, I hope you can also see how rich these castings are and that it's not going to be uh, beneficial for me to build up much more depth. I'm down past my wrist reaching down into Cinderella and I still haven't reached the bottom. So at some point I need to say that's enough Cinderella, it's enough depth. Yeah, haven't even got to the bottom yet, but I feel really good moisture. So the worms have obviously come back over here. They're working on some of the longer term food. There they are in an avocado peel, not surprising. With the springtails, these are all needles from our pine tree. Oh my goodness. Cinderella spent the summer outdoors, so she got some really rough and tumble material through the summer. It's time to bring her back into more, more civilized worm bin conditions, Cinderella. Tame the wild Cinderella. What I'm going to do is I'm going to feed on this side because I'm not even going to attempt to do a migration. You can see that the castings, because this is a mature worm bin, I'm digging up more compressed, not muddy, but certainly damp and compressed castings as I get closer to the bottom. So these tiers of a worm bin that I talked about last down, last time, you can see them in evidence here. The more moisture on the bottom versus the dryness on the top. Okay, and you can see on my hands that the castings are sticking a little bit more to my fingers. I've got just a normal tissue, but instead of putting it in in a clump, I'm going to open it up. Or this might be a paper towel. I'm just going to open it up. So again, it's not going to last long in the bin. I bought some new shoes recently, and these are the pads that were in the toes. I assume, yeah, it's just tissue paper wrapped around regular packing paper. Worms love tissue paper. I don't know whether you've ever fed tissue paper to worms, but they love it. So there it is. I'll just rip that up a little bit. So now that nice moist feeding. So there we go. Pumpkin for Cinderella. She is just going to love this. And... I mean, I'll just squeeze one. Look at the moisture in pumpkin. That is That just shows you how much moisture that's gonna put into the bin. And I've now got a really sticky hand, but don't worry, I've saved a paper towel for my hands. It's not totally dry because I wiped up a spill with it, but it will help me get, it will help me get the sticky pump pumpkin juice off my hands. I want to give Cinderella a little bit of what the worms were used to. All summer long they had leaves and compost, so I'm giving her some natural bedding. When you abruptly change the conditions in a bin, whether the foods or the bedding, I think it can put the worms into a bit of a shock. So I like this, that I'm giving them a little bit of leaves. And then eggshell, ground eggshells. So now I'm going to take that paper towel that I wipe my hands on and I'm just going to put it again. I don't want it clumped. These worms have lots of clumpy carbon to work on. I want this carbon to go more quickly. So I am thinning it out. And I think when we come back in all of this carbon, maybe not the leaves, but all of this carbon will be gone. And hopefully some of these needles and these other chunkier bits of carbon will start to disappear as the roly polies and the springtails get busy on those and the worms get busy on this pumpkin feeding. All right, Cinderella, you are back in my kitchen. Welcome home. And oh, look at the cocoons. I don't know whether you can see it. But there, there are cocoons everywhere, absolutely everywhere in this bedding. 
All right, everyone, I just have to put Prince Charming back in place. Our feeding zone indicator, Prince Charming, and the bubble wrap. Thanks, everyone, for coming along. Welcome home, Cinderella. Bye for now.